Hello everyone. So here's a small video. How can you use Solver to solve linear programming problems? So this is first problem and this is maximization problem. So let's see. So um, here's uh, the problem. Uh, it is about a company, Flair Furniture. So Flair Furniture company produces tables and chair and each table sold results in $7 of profit and chair uh, yields around 5% of profit. So each table require four hours of carpentry and two hours of painting. And similarly, each chair requires three hours of carpentry and one hour of painting. And the available production cap capacity is 240 hours of carpentry time and 100 hours of painting time. And uh, due to existing inventory of chair, Flair is, is to make no more than 60 new chairs. Okay, so what we see in this problem, First of all, we have, uh, you know, data related to uh, resource consumption, like each table requires four hours of carpentry and two hours of painting. And uh, in every linear programming problem, okay, first of all, you have to look for your decision variables. So what is decision variable here that we can understand using our uh, flair uh, reading the problem. So determine best possible combination of table and chair to manufacture in order to attain maximum profit. So here our decision variable is basically the number of tables and chairs that we need to manufacture and to attain the maximum profit. And um, then we have certain constraints equation like we have only 240 hours of carpentry time available, right? So you can see here a uh, resource constraint we have. We have only 240 hours. And similarly for painting time, we have only 100 hours fine and uh, what is our max basically main objective okay we need to decide the combination to attain maximum profit so here our objective is to maximize the profit okay and what would be the possible combination of table and chair keeping in mind okay these constraints okay suppose if we don't have any limitation of carpentry and painting we can have uh, you know we can produce as many tables and chairs we want but definitely resources are resources are restricted okay so first of all we need to formulate our problem so for profit you can see we have on this objective function okay we need to maximize it so suppose we have one table will uh, earn around seven dollars of profit and if we are assuming that uh, number of tables that will be producing uh, rt and similarly uh, number of chairs is c so our profit equation will become 7t plus 5c okay so this is our objective function and profit function we always need to maximize so this is maximization problem and t and c are our decision variables okay then we have constraint that i have already explained you okay so this will be basically our equations uh, constraint equation and objective function equation and uh, that is uh, the amount of resources consumed that is carpentry uh, hours available should be less than or equal to 250 because we have only 250 carpentry hours available similarly painting are available uh, is basically 100 so it will be 2t that is uh, uh, time uh, carpentry hour, painting hours consumed by a t number of tables would be 2t plus 1c it should be less than 100 and table and chair it would be greater than zero Th this is very uh you know essential to understand this point uh this these uh the, these are called basically known negativity constraint okay why because either table and chair that would be produced would be zero or greater than zero it won't be it won't be uh, less than uh, less than uh, less than uh, zero. Okay. So uh, let's see how we can solve this problem using Excel. So first of all, in your Excel sheet, you have to uh, write down your decision variable. So suppose our unit produced would be say zero zero. You can take any value in these particular cells. You can take either one 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 two one two three four. Uh, any value uh, um, you can take here and because solver will change it automatically when it will solve the problem and then you have objective function 70 and 50 uh, so basically it shows uh, the profit uh, basically that we which is associated with one table and one chair okay and these are your constraints okay so this is basically our problem 
So what do you have to do? First of all, you have to write down what are your decision variable here to table and chair. And you are assuming here unit produce, uh, that is a table that you are producing is one and chair you are producing is one. As I told earlier, you can take any value here. So, and our objective function is basically, we'll keep, keep the basically uh, values. Uh, we can also call them parameter value, which uh, parameter values, which do not change. Okay, so we know that 70 is the profit associated with one table and 50 is the profit associated with uh, one chair. Okay, then you write about your constraint equation. So carpentry is, was basically 40 plus 3c should be less than or equal to 240. So it will be 4, 3. Okay. So similarly, painting, it would be basically 2 and 1. Okay. Got it. So, and now see, how do we do, how do we calculate the profit, total profit? Definitely, it is 70 into t plus 50 into c. Okay. So, but here, what, what should be our value of t and t that we need to calculate? Okay, and we need to calculate what will be our maximum profit keeping in mind these constraints. Okay, so here we use very simple formula, which is sum product, right? Which what uh, sum product formula uh, function uh, does is that it, it multiply different uh, values and different respective values in different arrays and add them. For example, if I use sum product using this array and this array, what it will do? it will just multiply 17 to one plus 15 to one. Okay, so either you can drag this formula by doing absolute referencing. Okay, for after this formula, you can write, if you have a Mac, you can do command T. Okay, and in Windows, you can use F4 function. Okay, got it? For example, just I'm again repeating, wait a minute. Okay, so you have to just do command and T. Okay, got it? So what does absolute referencing does? Okay. And just a second. Okay, it is taking complete formula. Wait a minute. So, okay. So it, now I have done absolute referencing. After this, you similarly you can do here as well. So you can see you have done absolute referencing. What absolute referencing does is that it will keep, uh, you know, um, these value constant, if you drag this formula, so it will be always one, one here, okay? Otherwise it will be taking next values and uh, uh, next uh, next cells when you drag the formula. Okay, suppose now I have dragged this formula. So here what it has done, and the, and the number of carpentry are consumed when you have one table and one chair is four into one plus three into one, uh, that would be seven. Similarly for painting hours, okay? Two into one plus one into one, that would be three. Okay, so now we have entered all the values and in the right hand side, it would be 240, the number of hours available and 100. So basically in this particular cell, whatever value of table chair may be, it should be less than or equal to 240 because this is our limitation for resources. And same is with this particular cell. Okay, fine. So now what we'll do, we'll go to data and you will go to solver. Okay, and this solver window will open, okay. So I'm just resetting it so that we can start from beginning. Okay, so my objective function here is this one. Okay, where you are multiplying profit with number of chair. And this is our maximization problem. So I'll write it maximum. And by changing variable cell, these cells we need to change. We need to find out what is the optimum uh, uh, values of T and T. T and C, okay. And here now we will add various constraints. So this is basically referred as a left hand side. So here we have less than equal to sign. So we can basically put, uh, you know, uh, drag these values. And uh, if they have same signs, we can put it like th uh, uh, this as well. Otherwise, if uh, our constraint equation are different signs, we can uh, choose them one by one. Okay. So it should be less than equal to right hand side and I'll just press okay, okay. So what you have done, you have entered the value of objective cell, decision variables, your constraint equation, and you have to, uh, you know, take mark this thing also because make unconstrained variable non negative, okay? That is TNC is greater than equal to zero. And here you will choose simplex LP and you will just click to solve, okay? Click solve and you can see what you have got. You have got 30 tables and 40 chairs. Okay, and uh, um, your profit would be 4,100. 
okay and you have consumed all the resources okay so you can generate you know answer and sensitivity reports as well okay i'll explain you answer report over here suppose this report you have generated so it is telling you uh, what is your objective function profit and in two iteration of simplex method uh, the solution has been reached okay so final value is uh, 4100 and you will be producing 30 table uh, 30 tables and 40 chairs and what does binding represent? It represents that you have consumed all the resources. There's no slack available. The, uh, the resources available were 240 and you have used, uh, consumed all of the resources. Suppose it had, uh, it uh, value was 220 instead of 240. So it, it, um, it, uh, it will be non-binding constraint, okay? And you have, you, uh, you will have slack available for 20 hours, okay? So that's it for uh, maximization problem. Okay, now let's move to minimization problem. Okay, just a second. Okay, so this was our maximization problem. So this is minimization problem. Okay, so here it is about holiday meal turkey ranch. If, if they are basically uh, have to uh, mix, uh, you know, uh, make a feed by blending uh, two different type of brands. Okay, so you can, uh, we can uh, understand uh, the problem using this table. Okay, so there are two, two brands, brand one feed and brand two feed. Okay, so uh, the, uh, here it is minimization problem because here we are focusing to minimize our uh, costing uh, of uh, what will be our total cost of uh, basically uh, our meal, okay, that we are basically mixing brand one and brand two. What will the total cost? Okay, so suppose I assume that uh, I'm taking X1 units of brand one and X2 units of brand two. So what would be my objective function here? Objective function is denoted by capital letter Z mostly. So it will be two X1 plus three X2, right? Okay, so this is my objective function, but here it is my total cost. So this is minimization problem, not maximization problem. Okay, so you have to understand this thing. So what are now, uh, now look at various constraints, okay? So, you know, for ingredient A, okay? Uh, you should have minimum of ingredient A, okay? Whatever blend you create, okay? So uh, what is basically the condition that if you are having X1 units of brand one, so it will be five X1, okay? Five X1 will represent ingredient A in that particular mix plus 10 X2, it should be greater than or equal to 90 because it is minimum requirement. Similarly for B and similarly for C. So you can see these will be your constraint equation, right? So now let's solve it using solver. Okay. So suppose I've already written the problem. Okay. So in the similar fashion, you have to write your problem. Okay. Then the unit produce, you need to find out your objective function would be 2x1 plus 3x2. So you have... Um, and return the constant values and similarly you have written the constant equation with greater than equal to sign okay so what we'll do we'll do some product formula here equal to some product okay so what we are multiplying this array right okay with this array right so now you can basically drag this formula okay then you can write lhs okay so what we have to do in the similar way we do we don't have to do anything we'll just go to data we'll go to solver and suppose i am resetting it again okay so what is my objective self okay now this is a minimization problem keep in mind and suppose I have taken these variable cells, then I'm adding the constraint values. So LHS, okay, here you have to choose a sign greater than or equal to. Constraint can be equal to, less than, greater than, okay, or mixed constraint problem you can get, okay. So accordingly, you can choose the sign, okay. Got it. So here again, I'll go for simplex LP, okay, and I'll just click on solve. So this is your solution, okay? So thank you. That's all, all about simple LPP and uh,
uh, then uh, I'll be sharing another video which will be including your transportation problem, right?